Hello everybody, it's your boy Durf, and welcome back to Scrap Make Nick. So today I have something a little special for you guys. Uh, occasionally, as a mod maker for Scrap Mechanic, I get some very weird requests. Like someone asking me to port Scrap Mechanic to other platforms, like a mobile platform or game consoles. So we're going to be exploring, I, I haven't actually done it, okay? There, you can't play Scrap Mechanic on a mobile device, you can't play it on your Xbox or PlayStation. It's not going to happen, okay? No matter what you want. It's probably not going to happen. Like the closest you can get to playing Scrap Mechanic on a mobile device is to run it through like a virtual a, a VPN. So that it's running on your computer but you can see it through your phone. And that's like, you know, how are you even going to play that? It's not, you only have that one touch screen. Point is, today we're going to be looking at playing Scrap Mechanic with a controller. So this is going to be like as if uh, we're playing on an Xbox or an Xbox 360 because that's the controller that I have. So as you can see on the bottom right corner of the screen there, I actually have my controller plugged in and uh, it's registering all the buttons that I press. And I also took the time to map all the buttons to actions in the game. So this is a little bit of a hack job, but this is going to be pretty close to what I think Scrap Mechanic would be on a console. So let's take a look and see how this is relative to the mouse and keyboard. Okay, so the first thing that comes to mind is well, walking around, and walking around isn't too difficult. It's, uh, you know, the, the first thing that I notice is that if you're actually trying to look around, you are you can only look around at a fixed speed. And that's a little bit of a problem. But like, with a mouse, you have so much freedom, you can actually do very quick adjustments or very slow adjustments. So I guess this isn't too much of a problem if you're just, like, you know, taking a stroll in your world like I am. Uh, but say you want to do a quick 180, it actually takes you quite a while, whereas with the mouse, you can control that a lot better. Uh, but if you're just going around and you have, you know, your tools, your hammer and stuff around, that over there is actually, um, well, let's run over to it. So I have the, I have the A button mapped to jump. I have, uh, the B button. What do I have the B button? Oh, that's crouch. And the X button is to run, to sprint. So that's the default player controls. I actually have three sets of controls. We're going to get into that a little bit later, but uh, th these are the default controls for player on foot. Now let's go ahead and remove this from my lift. Uh, I do have the right trigger is... Th so the triggers are like the mouse buttons. So whenever I press the right trigger, it's like placing down an item, and then uh, the left trigger is the, le the, the right click to remove stuff. So building is... A little bit of a pain in the butt, uh, but that's only because you don't have such precision. Like, see, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting the exact block that I want, but that's just because you don't have as much precision with your um, with your mouse movement. But you are able to build with this controller setup. It's it's uh, you know surprisingly not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. So it is definitely possible to play scrap mechanic with a controller so far. Now, if we're using something like the spud gun, of course, the triggers being the mouse controls, this does make the spud gun behave like any sort of shooter game, so where you use the left trigger to look down the sights, and the right trigger is to shoot. Now, I do have the arrow buttons uh, up and down. These are to adjust your view, so if you want to go into first person, you can do that as well. So one thing to note is that this is, like, uh, again, uh, you know, the only problem that I have with this is that it's just very slow. So if you can imagine you're running away from farm bots, you want to start running this way, but then sometimes you just got to react pretty quick and turn around and shoot a, uh, a farm bot. Your ability to aim is going to be significantly worse than if you were using a mouse and keyboard. Just because you don't have that range of freedom that you have with a mouse. But other than that, it's actually not too bad. I'm actually having a, you know, surprising amount of fun doing this. Oh, oh, and I should probably mention, um, the... Let, let's take a look at our other buttons. So let's put a wall down, and let's actually open up our inventory with Y. That's our inventory button. So we're going to get, uh... Well, let's get, grab a seat, and we're going to put that down in place of the wood, I think. Close our inventory up. So the arrow buttons left and right on the controller, that's choosing our item that we're using. So let's select the seat. 
Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to map the shortcut keys for um, switching inventory bars. So as, as it is right now, the way that I set it up, you only have the one inventory bar. You can't switch between one, two, and three. You only have the, the ten items that you're carrying with you. But, you know, again, that's not too bad anyway. You are playing with a controller after all. So say you're trying to build and you want to ro rotate an item. That is the right bumper. But say you want to rotate the other way. So right now I'm rotating. Let's let's get into first person. I always prefer building in first person. So right now we're rotating the seats clockwise. And we're just going forward into the rotations available to the seat. Uh, but if we hold our sprint button. And then also try to rotate. That's rotating the other way counterclockwise. For my controller the X button is shift. So that's what's letting me rotate the other way. I was thinking about um, using the left bumper to rotate the other way. Like, it's possible to set up any control scheme that you want, of course. However, I found that the available buttons on a controller is very limiting. You don't actually have enough buttons for absolutely everything, so you're going to have to be very clever with the way that you set up your controller inputs. Okay, so now let's move on to car controls. Uh, where it says press E to use, I actually mapped that to my left bumper. So we're going to use left bumper to get into any seat of the car. And now this is uh, a little different. We can drive like this, but right now we're using player controls. So we actually have to push the thumbstick forward to move, to drive forward. And steering is, you know, you, you can steer around, of course. But I actually have a second set of controls. So let me just go ahead and switch to them right now, and that is... Uh, I actually have a shortcut for it, so if I press the middle button and the trigger... There we go, now we should be set to... Yeah, if I'm, if I'm pressing the thumbstick forward, we're not driving forward. So right now, we are set to the driving controls. It's totally possible for the developers to actually do this in Scrap Mechanic 2 if they, if they wanted. When you get into a seat, your secondary controller inputs uh, activate. So with the drive controls activated... Uh, it's actually the right trigger to go forward and the left trigger to go backwards. This is very typical of a lot of driving games. They have their uh, accelerator and their brakes on each of the triggers. Now, one thing to note about these driving controls is that you do not they're, they're not actually better than the keyboard controls. Like, a lot of people actually want Scrap Mechanic on a console because of their ability to drive cars on a console happens to be better than what they can do on a keyboard and mouse. And usually that's because of the steering. So if you look at the thumbstick, uh, if I press it even a little bit to the left, it's just as if we're pressing the A key. So that'll instantly turn our wheels all the way to the left, no matter what. So we can't very lightly turn. Whether we are completely throttling our thumbstick to the left or right, or just very lightly pressing it, it's not going to make a huge... It's not going to make any difference whatsoever. So that's just something to keep in mind. Your driving ability isn't going to be improved by using a controller at all. But I was able to map all of the car controls. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's a little bit disorienting, so I'm going to turn off follow cam. And I, I mapped that to the select button, which is usually the uh, view changing button of a lot of games. So we're going to go into free cam, because that's a little bit easier on the eyes. And, you know, uh, now that I'm doing this, I actually noticed a huge difference between follow cam in Scrap Mechanic and the camera of vehicles in many other games. So let's actually go back to follow cam for a minute. So in normal video games, when you have, like, a, a follow cam on your vehicle and you just turn all of a sudden, uh, sometimes there's, like, a little bit of a give to the camera and it'll let your vehicle turn without your camera turning and then your camera will slowly catch up. And I think that's actually a lot better... Because if you have the follow cam on in Scrap Mechanic, you can get dizzy pretty quick because it's so stiff. It's very locked onto your vehicle. So I kind of wish there was a setting or a way to like customize that a little bit in Scrap Mechanic. Weird how it took playing with the controller for me to figure that one out. <laughs> it's, it's really hard to control this with all of my brain power. But I have, you know, all of my hands. I have all of my hands on the controller. It's both two hands. I only have two hands. Contrary to those rumors that people spread around about me having more than two hands. No, no, I have just... I have both my hands on the controller, so I have all the controls readily accessible to me, and I'm still having a hard time actually driving around. But for those vehicles that have buttons, I actually mapped... I actually connected ten buttons to the seat, 
to test what's the easiest way to map 10 buttons to a controller. So for this, I have the A button as one, B is two, X is three, Y is four. Uh, the bumpers are five and six, and then the arrow buttons are uh, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And that will let you do uh, some, you know, if you have a like flying creation, you can actually use the arrow buttons for your maneuvering thrusters or strafe and, and pitch or whatever you use them for. Now I'm actually really curious. I'm gonna try that uh, flying car that I built a while ago and I'm gonna try that on a controller because that actually seems really cool. But before we do that, I actually have a secondary set of controls for vehicles. So let's actually switch over to that right now. I have another shortcut key for that. It's the middle button and A. And this will, uh, so even if I press the triggers, the triggers are now buttons. And this is a different kind of driving style. This is probably something that you see closer to uh, Mario Kart type of control scheme. So you can still steer with the thumbstick, but you press A to accelerate and B to brake and of course eventually reverse. So you have A and B controls your accelerator. I guess it's also like uh, many other video games too, although none really come to mind. So this control scheme, all it's meant to do is just free up some of the extra buttons. So you can do, uh, this time I have the arrow buttons on one, two, three, and four. Maybe this control scheme is better for flying, I'm not exactly sure, because then you could actually use the triggers for your thrust, for your forward and reverse thrust. And then you could also use the arrow keys for your uh, maneuvering thrusters. But then of course we also have um, X and Y, they are still buttons, so those are five and six. Uh, the bumpers and the triggers are seven, eight, nine, and 10 or zero, I should say zero. So these are all of the control schemes that I programmed. Of course, with the way that you set it up, you can actually set up any control scheme that you want. Just keep in mind that it's very limited, like a lot of the shortcut keys. So for example, how do we get out of a seat? Well, for that, wait, how do I get out of a seat? So I think to get out of a seat, I actually have to switch to the player controls just to get out of the seat again. Well, that's a little inconvenient. I might have to come up with a different way on doing that. So to get out of a vehicle then, you just have to pop back into your player on foot controls and then just press the E, the, the enter and exit button. So building in this mode, it's probably what you would expect. It's a little more inconvenient just because you don't have the mouse control that, you'd, you're, that you're used to. But you know, if, you're, if you really wanna play with a controller, it is definitely possible. Now, of course, my setup, like I can actually just switch to my keyboard and mouse. Right now I'm playing with my keyboard and mouse. You can see the controller buttons aren't lighting up on screen. So I'm, I, you know, I can switch over to my mouse anytime that I want. And I can do all sorts of stuff like that. Super quick motions. But then, you know, trying to switch over to my controller again, like I, I can't, I don't have the precision or the speed so, I mean, this is sort of what, you know, Scrap Mechanic would be like on a console. It's definitely doable. I think uh, the developers maybe should consider it. I don't know. I don't know if they should consider it. But let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. Should Scrap Mechanic be on a console? What do you think about this controller setup doohickey? And if you're interested on how I did this, I'm going to do a tutorial video on, the, on, on my other channel, Scrap Mechanic Mods. Link to that will be in the description down below, so, so keep an eye out on that channel for the tutorial on how to do this yourself. But before we go, I want to check out one more thing real quick. Alright, so we are in another world, uh, just because I wanted to try this vehicle with a controller setup. So, we're gonna fir so first things first, we're going to have to pop into the seat, of course. And, oh, 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 okay, okay, my thumbsticks are a little sensitive. Let's uh, zoom out, here we go. Now, right now we're in player controls, so we can already drive around with this, no problem. I'm going to go to the alternate vehicle controls, uh, where I have the A button to accelerate forward because, well, I, I suppose, you know, let's, let's do the, uh, let's do both of them. All right, so here we go. Now we're in free cam. That's how I want to drive this hover speedster. All right, so let's point in a direction and we'll fly with the trigger. Very nice. Now, left and right on the analog stick is strafe in this vehicle. You can uh, be very precise with how you want to drive this. So if I were to do the alternate vehicle settings, uh, then I'd have to press A to accelerate forward and B to accelerate back. I mean, it's not that much different other than the uh, precise altitude control. 
being a little bit awkward with up and right arrow, arrow buttons. See, up goes up, which is actually convenient, but right has to go down. And that's just because of the way that I set up my buttons. It's uh, up, right, down, left for one, two, three, four. If you knew your button setup on your controller, then you'd build your creations to match those controls, right? Like you can just add in an extra button to move your button two into the number three slot. So you can just press up and down to change your altitude. It's actually pretty simple stuff. So this was an interesting journey and I had no idea what to expect, but I actually kind of like it. I kind of like it. Maybe we'll have controller support in the future, although I don't think it's worth it when you're building, but it might be worth it when you're driving around in your vehicles. Who knows? So again, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Check out my other channel where I'll be showing you guys a tutorial on how to do this yourselves. Leave a like, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!